Okay, today we're going to learn how to use the rotoscoping tool in After Effects. And this is what it will look like when it's all done. And what rotoscoping is, is a uh, way to separate a subject from the background. Uh, kind of like you would do with green screen, only where we haven't shot green screen. And so we basically need to tell the computer how to, what, the, what the foreground is, and it will make the rest of it go away. Okay. Now, one, this is not perfect, because as you can see, when we're over black, at, at places where, you know, we, we, you know, this needs to be still softened up a little bit to make that work. And there's some other um, plugins that we can use to clean that up. But that's, this is essentially what we're going for. So what we will do is we will open up After Effects and you will take the Mean Teacher file and you will drag it into a new comp. And there's our guy right there. And so where we will start is right when he's is right when he settles in. So something like that. Um, because the computer Everything to the right of this, the computer will be able to track fairly easily. But we're going to need to spend a lot of time nudging his entrance. And so it'll be make our lives easier if we start with him fully in, in the frame. So um, using the rotoscoping tool, which is this tool right here, first thing we need to do is double click on our layer so we can get into the layer mode because that's where it will be applied. And then we will click on the roto brush tool. And we have two options. If you just it just comes up green, and when we draw a green line, that will uh, define our 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 foreground. And if we hold down the option button, it will define our background, and we'll draw there. Uh, the command button. If you hold down the command button and click and drag, it will change the size of your brush. So command, click left click and drag to hold the brush. Uh, just green to define your foreground. So I'm just using the left click for that. And then, like, let's zoom in on here. And to hold down the option button to better define our background. And I'm going to hold down the command button to make this a little smaller. Hold in, holding down option to get it to include that hair. Come on now. You want that hair, please? Thank you. All right, so let's see what else we got. So we're checking along the edges just to make sure our first one is pretty good. back out. All right. Oop, we got to get some ear in here. And we need some more hair up here. Okay, so that's a good start. Um, the way this roto brush wor works is that basically it's looking at luminance and RGB to to look for the differences from the foreground and background. So when his skin gets over this this yellow background, it it's harder for it to to track that. And when our values get to be similar in uh, in luminance, it's it's harder for it to track it. And so in a perfect world, we would have had a nice blue background back here, which would be the opposite of our yellow guy. But we don't have that, so we're just going to have to nudge it along to make it happy. So I'm going to hit the page up button to go backward a frame and see what changes have been made. The, arm, the shoulders, the arms still look good. So I'm going to continue to go back another frame with page up. And that still looks good. Back another frame with page up. Our arms are still tracking, our hair is still tracking. Another page up. That still looks good. Another page up. 
ooh, actually, I'm going to go page forward. Um, we, we haven't been tracking this hair up until now, so I'm going to continue to tell it to not track that hair by holding the Option button down and dragging that back. So page up again. All right. Um, I'm gonna go, okay, so n now in this page up, now it's, it's as we're approaching the uh, top of frame, it's not so happy. So I'm going to kind of paint in our background by holding down the Option button. Now that's better. Let's see how our sleeves are doing. And our ear is still good. All right. So let's continue on. Page up. Page up. Page up. Oops. Okay. Uh, we've lost the sleeve here because um, these two tone values are very similar. So I'm going to page forward again until I find that. Okay. So now I'm going to try to put our sleeve back in, page up, add our sleeve, and where it turns green is where we, we know that we've already been, so that when we go back and forth we kind of know when we start getting into new material. Okay, and so then I want you guys just to continue to track back and make sure that all these changes are being followed until we get to the end. So when you've completed the whole process, when you scrub through your timeline, you'll see that the, the pink tracking line, the fuchsia pack tracking line, will match your guy pretty tightly all the way through okay and if we go back to, and if we go to the composition we see that we've created an alpha background okay so now let's let's ram render this and uh, see how much chatter we have around this mask that we've built with the rotoscoping tool and it takes the computer a while to do this and eventually I give it a few minutes to think and then I hit the space bar to see if it'll start chugging through and if it doesn't just go go back to RAM render wait until your patience uh, wears out and it's best to start at the beginning of the timeline to do this and then when you can hit the space bar it'll start walking it through just like that So that speeds up the process, but it needs a minute to think first before it can start doing this. And so by using the space bar, it'll only go through it once. And so now we'll have to hit zero on the keypad in order for it to loop. And you can see that like on the right side of his face, we've got a little bit of chatter around his hair. And we've got some chatter around his hair and, and over his shoulders a little bit. And so we will tweak that by using some of these matte tools. Like, let's go ahead and set our smooth at 4 and our feather at 35. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so once it's done thinking, we get a better view of that. Let's go ahead and uh, set our choke at 50. And what that does is shrinks the mat a little bit to help it. And let's hit the refine mat options. We want to click on motion blur. And then I want you guys to take a look at decontamination. If you click on view, it'll show you that this white area is the, is the tricky spot that we want to monitor. And if we want to increase the decontamination, it actually makes that a little bigger. So let's set that at 2 and see what, what that looks like with a RAM render. 
And so now when that we watch it, we can tell that the, that the chattering has been reduced significantly. All right, so now let's go ahead and composite our text in between these two elements. First thing we'll do is we'll select our file and I'll hit Command D to duplicate it. And we will turn off the Roto Brush tool in the bottom layer so that it, our background layer is returned. And now let's create some text. And we will go Command D, space, R, K. And we will drop that between the two layers. And we will mess with our, our letting. work. Uh, actually, I want to shrink it here. Come on now, shrink. And then we'll just kind of replace the... All right. And that way he will fill the hole. And let's RAM render that. So when we ram render this, we can tell that he kind of settles in a spot that's a little different than before. So we will just adjust our text accordingly. And then let's back it up and see what our edges look like when he's over the black. And that looks much better than the one I showed you guys. I'm getting good at this. All right, so go ahead and render that bad boy.